Hello students, it is nice to meet you again in this platform. I hope all are doing good by the grace of God. So without any delay, we quickly move on to our quote for the week. Be smart. Say please and thank you. Make friends and be thoughtful. Arrive on time, prepared and ready to learn. Respect yourself and others. Try your best. Yes, my dear students, this is the life's mantra. So just follow to be smart. This will be helpful for you throughout your lifetime. So let's quickly move on to the recap session. In last class, we started with a new unit, which is unit 2, motion. Under that we saw the objects which change the position is said to be motion. And the object which doesn't change the position is said to be rest. And we saw different types of motion, right? What are they? Circular motion, rotatory motion, linear motion, oscillatory motion and random motion. Apart from that, we also saw two types of motion. One is the uniform motion. What is uniform motion? Equal distance and equal intervals of time is said to be uniform motion. Then what is non-uniform motion? Unequal distance in equal intervals of time is said to be non-uniform motion. And we saw three important formulas, right? Speed is equal to distance traveled by the time taken. Velocity is nothing but the displacement by the time taken. And acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time taken. Change in velocity is nothing but final velocity minus initial velocity. So acceleration can be denoted as final velocity minus initial velocity by time taken. So I hope you all are clear with previous video. So in today's video, the topics to be concentrated are Graphical representation of motion along straight line. Under that, we are going to deal with distance time graph and the velocity time graph. And next topic is very important, very, very important in physics, which is equations of motion. So these two topics we are going to deal in today's video. So let's move on to class students. First, we'll see on graphical representation of motion along straight line. As the name suggests, right, graphical representation of motion along straight line. So we are going to represent the motion, the motion taken by the particle in a graphical mode. So we are going to represent the motion covered in a graph. Okay, this is what we are going to deal in today's class. So first we will see the distance time graph. And we saw two types of motion, right? Uniform motion and non-uniform motion. So first we'll deal with uniform motion. So consider the table, okay? Here I have given you a table. It says a distance walked by a person at different times. So here I've noted a time and the distance. So let's see here, zero minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it is of equal distance, right? Equal intervals of time. And you have equal distance as well. It is just a multiples of 500 and this is just a multiples of 5. So we have equal distance and equal intervals of time. So this is known to be a uniform motion. So when you plot this in a graph, so you would have learned in maths, how to plot a graph, right students? So you are going to take time in x-axis, time in x-axis and distance in y-axis. You already know a graph contains x-axis and y-axis. So you are going to plot time in x-axis and distance in y-axis. When you plot it, you will be getting a graph like this. So this a time, distance time graph for a uniform motion. When we look at this time, distance time graph, we notice two things, right? So first, it is a straight line. And we also notice that the person covers equal distance in equal intervals of time. So we 
can therefore conclude that he walked at a constant speed. Yes, so we know that speed is equal to distance covered by time taken. Right, so I hope in previous video you would have seen this example, right? A car is moving um, along a straight line and it covers 60 km in first hour, 60 km in second hour and 60 km in third hour. So it is a uniform motion, right? Because it covers equal distance with equal intervals of time. So can we plot a graph for this? Yes, here when you plot it, you would be getting a straight line graph and we said that 60 km in first hour. We have noted as time in hours and distance in kilometer. So in first hour, it covered 60 km. So this one is the first plot. And in second hour, it also covered 60 km. So 60 plus 60, which gives 120 and 120 km in second hour. And in third hour, it will be 180. So you will be getting a straight line. And now, you are going to find the slope of the straight line. How to find the slope? We already know that speed is equal to distance by time taken. So distance which is in x-axis and the time which is in y, uh, distance in, is in y-axis and time is in x-axis. So y by x gives the slope of the straight line. So from this graph we are going to see. We can take two plot. We can take 150 and 2.5 and you can mark 30 and 0.5. You can take any uh, two numbers okay so from this graph we are going to see bc by ac okay so bc is nothing but y axis and ac is nothing but x axis so bc the difference between so b is nothing but 150 150 minus 30 by ac is nothing but ac is it is two uh, it is in between 2 and 3 so we can write it as 2.5 and this one is 0 and 1. So you can write as 0 0.5. So it would be 150 minus 30 by 2.5 minus 0 0.5. Which gives 120 by 2. Which is 60 km per hour. So by using the slope of the straight line. We can find the speed covered by the car. Am I making it clear students? Yes. So with this as a base, we are going to compare speeds. So we are going to compare speed. So here I have given a speedometer. You would have seen this in a car, I guess. Okay. So we are going to compare speed of here. We are going to compare speeds of like walking, running, bicycle and car. So walking and running is almost similar. So we will just take a walking bicycle and a car okay let us denote a man who's driving a car as a okay a man who's driving a car is a and a man who's driving riding a bicycle is b and a man who's walking is c and we know that cycling can be faster than walking and a car can go faster than a cycle Right. So, among these three, car only moves faster than the cycle, than the man. Right. So, the distance time graph of these three would be given as like this. Okay. So, the A graph, it covers the speed covered by the car. B denotes the speed covered by the cycle and C denotes the speed covered by walk. So this is how we compare the speeds of different people. Okay. The slope of the line of the distance time graph becomes steeper and steeper as the speed increases. So this is how we calculate distance time graph for uniform motion. So now we we'll move on to the distance time graph for non-uniform motion. What is non-uniform motion? We already know that 
unequal distance in equal intervals of time is known to be a non-uniform motion. In previous video, we saw this example, right? A bus. When you travel in bus, if it is if it moves in a crowded area, it reaches 100 meters in 5 minutes. If, if, if there is a traffic, okay. But the same bus, when it, when it has a clear road, it covers 2 kilometers in 5 minutes. So this is a non-uniform motion, which is nothing but unequal distance with equal intervals of time. Yes. So here, I've plotted, given you a table about distance traveled by a car in a time interval of 2 seconds. See here, the time is given as uh, intervals of 2 seconds. So time has an equal intervals whereas distance varies. Distance is unequal. So when we plot this in a graph, students you can plot it. So take time in x-axis and distance in y-axis and try plotting it. When you plot it, you will be getting a graph similar to this. So note that the graph is not a straight line as we got in the case of uniform motion. So this nature of graph shows non-linear variation of the distance traveled by the car with time. So this represents motion with non-uniform speed. So here I have listed you two types of graph. So which one is a uniform motion graph? Which one is a non-uniform motion graph? Of course, we know that a uniform motion graph gives us a straight line. So this first figure is known to be the distance time graph for uniform speed and this second figure denotes the distance time graph for non-uniform speed. So I think you are clear with distance time graph for uniform and non-uniform speed. Student. So now let's see velocity time graph. So the variation in velocity of an object with time can be represented by velocity time graph. So in this graph, we can plot time along the x-axis and the velocity along the y-axis. So if the object moves at the uniform velocity. So here in this graph, we have taken a car poses a uniform velocity of 40 km per hour. Okay, we know that. The product of velocity and time gives the displacement. As we know the formula for velocity, right? Velocity is nothing but displacement by time taken. When you want the displacement alone, you can just, it's just the product of velocity into time. So, thus the area under the velocity time graph is equal to the magnitude of the displacement. So, the distance covered by the car in a time interval t can be expressed as so here we can denote it as a b c d so this is of rectangle shape right and this can be denoted as s is equal to a c into c d which is nothing but length length into breadth which gives the area of rectangle a b c d so we can also study about Uniformly accelerated motion like the consider car being driven along a straight road. Okay, its velocity for every 5 seconds is noted uh, from the speedometer of the car. So the velocity of a car in meter per second at different intervals of time is also shown in this table. Okay, so this is a uniformly accelerated motion, right? Yes. So when you plot this in a graph, you will get a graph seen like this. So in this case, the velocity time graph for the motion of the car is changes by equal amounts in equal intervals of time. Thus, for all uniformly accelerated motion, the velocity time graph is also a straight line. One can also determine the distance moved by the car from its velocity time graph. This, so the area under this velocity is here. A, B, consider this A, B, B, E, A. So this area, okay. Consider this area. Uh, area under this velocity time graph gives the distance covered by an object. So S is equal to 
area A, B, C, D, E. So, in this area, we have a rectangle part and a triangle part. So, when you add this triangle part and the rectangle part, we get the total area of this quadrangle. So, area of rectangle A, C, E, D. Okay, and the area of triangle A, B, C. We know that area of rectangle is length into breadth. So, length is A, E and the breadth is E, D. Whereas, when it comes to area of triangle, it is half into base into height. So, half into base is nothing but A, C into height is B, C. So, you have you'll be ending with A, E into E, D plus half into AC into BC. And if you, if we calculate the area of quadrangle ABCDE, can also be calculated by calculating the area of trapezium. Okay, this looks like trapezium, right? ABCDE. So, the area of trapezium is half into sum of length of parallel side into distance between parallel sides. So, half into AE Parallel side is AE and BE. So these two are parallel sides, right? So AE in A plus BD and into the distance between. So distance is EB. Thus we can find the area covered by the object. So I have listed out three different graphs. So first graph shows that velocity time graph for a uniform motion. If it is a uniform motion, the graph looks like this, okay? And the second graph shows that if it is a uniformly accelerated motion, the graph seems to be a straight line. It will be increasing straight line. If it is a uniformly retarded motion, it would be a decreasing straight line. So these are the three various graphs under velocity time graph. I hope... You are clear with it. So, then what happens if it is a non-uniformly accelerated motion? Okay. In case of non-uniformly accelerated motion, distance time graph as well as the velocity time graph can have any shape. So, it can be of any shape. It can be denoted by this shape or it can have various shapes like this. Okay. So, the velocity and time graph will have any shape for non-uniform acceleration. So, hope you are clear with velocity time graph as well. So, we under the graphical representation of motion along straight line, we did distance time graph and the velocity time graph. So, let's quickly move on to the next important, very important topic which is equations of motion. And Newton studied the motion of object and he gave a set of three equations, okay? So, in case of uniform acceleration, there are three equations of motion which are also known as the laws of constant acceleration. So, equation of motion can also be termed as laws of constant acceleration. Hence, these equations are used to derive the components like displacement, velocity, time and acceleration. So the three equations are, so we need to memorize it. So V is equal to U plus V. This is the first equation. V is equal to U plus H. Second equation is V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. Third equation is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. Third equation is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. So these three equations are very important and you need to memorize these three equations. So where S is displacement, U is initial velocity, V is final velocity, A is acceleration and T is time of motion. And these equations are referred as SUAT equations where SUAT stands for displacement is denoted by S, initial velocity denoted by U, final velocity denoted by V, acceleration denoted by A and time denoted by T. So thus it can be referred as SUAT equations. So let's quickly move on to a graph. So this graph 
shows the change in velocity with time for a uniformly accelerated object. So here the object starts from the point D. So the object starts from the point D in the graph with velocity u. Okay, this is the velocity. It is plotted, velocity is plotted in y-axis and time is plotted in x-axis. So the object starts from the point D and its velocity, the, therefore the initial velocity is denoted as u. Okay, and its velocity keeps increasing after time t, it reaches the point B. So here the point B, so it is would be the final velocity, the, it is denoted as V. V is a final velocity and U is the initial velocity. So initial velocity is equal to U. U is nothing but the distance. So O D, which is known to be U. Okay. O D or E A. Okay. And the final velocity V gives the distance between O C or it can be eb and time time taken is oe so the distance traveled okay with respect to time it just denoted as t which is equal to oe so first equation of motion acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time taken we know that right Acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time taken. So change in velocity is nothing but final velocity minus initial velocity by time taken. Here in this graph we know that the final velocity would be OC. V, the distance traveled is OC, right? So OC minus initial velocity would be OD. And the time taken is OE. So we will be getting OC minus OD by OE which can be written as so OC minus OD which gives this part right when you subtract OC minus this part you will get this part so DC so OC minus OD can be written as DC by OE so acceleration is equal to DC by OE is nothing but you can mention it as T so acceleration is given as DC by or you can write it as dc is equal to at. Okay? Yes. And from the graph, eb is equal to ea plus ab. ea is, eb is not, nothing but, you need to add it. ea plus ab gives eb. Right? So, when you substitute the values given. So, we know that ab is equal to at. Right? So when you substitute it, you will be getting the first equation of motion, which is nothing but V is equal to U plus H. So let's move on to the second equation of motion. So let's take the same graph. So from the graph, the distance covered by an object during time T given by the area of quadrangle DOEB. So we are going to take this quadrangle DOEB. Okay, so S is equal to area of quadrangle DOEP. This quadrangle consists of two quadrangles, right? One is a rectangle and one is a triangle. So area of rectangle DOEA and area of triangle DAB, which is nothing but area of rectangle is length into breadth. So when it comes to length into breadth, Length is AE or you can mention as OD. Okay. You will just take it as AE and the breadth would be OE. When it comes to triangle, the formula for triangle is area of uh, formula is half into base into height. Half into base. For this triangle, the base would be AD. Okay. And height would be AD. So, AE into OE plus half into AB into DA. When you substitute this, we will be reaching the second equation. S is equal to UT plus half AT square. How we get this equation? We know AE is nothing but the U, initial velocity, and OE is nothing but T. 
you just need to substitute the values and plus half ab is nothing but we in previous uh, equation we saw right ab is equal to acceleration so ab is acceleration into time so a t into da is nothing but t again t which gives t square so thus we'll get second equation s is equal to ut plus half a t square so let's move on to the third equation of motion again take this graph here we see that the distance covered by the object during time t is given by the area of quadrangle doeb and we know that doeb is a trapezium okay so here from the graph doeb is a trapezium and s is equal to area of the trapezium doeb which gives half into sum of length of parallel sides into distance between parallel sides so this is the formula for area of trapezium half into sum of length of parallel sides into distance between parallel sides so what are the parallel sides we have so od and be are the parallel sides of this trapezium and the distance between parallel sides is something but the time taken okay so it can be written as half into od plus be into oe which gives s is equal to half into u plus b into t we know that od is u and be is v into oe is nothing but t thus from first equation of motion we know that t is equal to v minus u by a so we get the third equation which is nothing but v square is equal to u square plus 2 as so we finished first equation of motion second equation of motion and third equation of motion so what are what is the first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at second equation of motion s is equal to ut plus half at square and third equation is v square is equal to u square plus 2 as so now let's see a problem related to equation of motion so here's the problem a body is moving with an initial velocity of 2 i cap meter per second and acceleration of minus 0.5 i cap meter per second square find the time when the velocity of the particle becomes zero so here they have given initial velocity as 2 i cap meter per second acceleration as minus 0.5 i cap meter per second square and the velocity final velocity also they have given they have said that velocity of the particle becomes zero so the final velocity would be zero and you need to find the time t okay i cap is nothing but it is just a unit vector it doesn't create a great impact in our problem so you don't need to worry about it okay so the solution goes like we have given uh with final velocity v is equal to 0 and we know that the first equation of motion is v is equal to u plus at so when you substitute all the values given you will be getting as 0 is equal to 2 i cap minus 0.5 i cap and t so why does this minus comes because in the problem they have given us acceleration is minus 0.5 so you need to include the negative sign also so when you calculate this you will be reaching t is equal to 4 seconds thus we got the time when the velocity of the particle becomes zero so this is related to first equation of motion and for your homework problem i have given you the problems related to second equation of motion and third equation of motion so that's it for today's class my dear students so can we have a quick recap of what we learned today yes so here i have listed out few graphs so let's analyze it okay so first we have a distance time graph x is nothing but distance okay so distance time graph velocity time graph and acceleration what if we have a stationary object so stationary object is nothing but it has no change in position right so 
when we consider a distance time graph for a stationary object we will be having a graph like this and the velocity time graph it is zero and the acceleration time graph will be a zero one when it comes to uniform motion we already saw that for a distance time graph it would be a straight line for and for velocity time graph it has a constant velocity and for acceleration time graph it is zero okay and when it comes to an constant acceleration motion okay when it comes to constant acceleration motion the well, uh, distance time graph shows like this curve and velocity time graph shows a straight line whereas the constant acceleration time graph gives a constant acceleration as it is termed as constant acceleration motion so hope you are clear with the graphical representation of motion and next we saw about three equations so what are the three equations v is equal to u plus at v square is equal to u plus u square plus 2as and s is equal to ut plus half at square and what are the abbreviations of this? We know displacement is termed as S, initial velocity is termed as U, final velocity is termed as V, acceleration is termed as A, and time is termed as T. So let's move on to the homework part. So as I mentioned earlier, I have already given a problem related to first equation of motion, and here's two problem which gives which is related to second equation of motion and third equation of motion so first problem is if initial velocity of a particle is 2 meter per second and it travels 10 meter in one second then what will be its acceleration so this is related to second equation of motion so you just need to substitute the values given and you need to find the acceleration and second question is let the initial velocity of the particle is 5 meter per second it is accelerating at an acceleration of 1 meter per second square its final velocity is 10 meter per second then the distance traveled by this particle will be given by so this you can find it using third equation of motion so you will be finding the displacement s yes. okay so Write this in your classwork, students. Take a picture of it and upload it in Google Classroom. So that's it. Thank you, my dear students. Stay home and stay safe.